Hello, everybody, and welcome to GIC TV. My name is Bernard Alvarez, and we have another wonderful speaker joining us uh, for our first broadcast of the year. I'm really looking forward to spending this hour with you and spending this hour with her. Her name is Angel Rose, and she is an author, a, a speaker, a healer. Uh, I don't know what else I can say about her. She's uh, been very well known in the, uh, the consciousness movement for quite a while now. Um, her healing modalities include Reiki, psychic laser therapy, hypnotherapy, past life regression, uh, and of course, Akashic healing. And we're going to talk a bit about the Akashic records and whatnot in just a moment with uh, Ann Gale. Uh, but I just wanted to welcome everybody and uh, let you know we're in for a very, very nice treat. So without further ado, let me welcome Ann Gale Rose. Hi, Bernard. Thank you for having me on again. Hello, Angel. How are you? It's a <laughs> I'm pleasure. very well. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yours too. Meet the, the people behind the scenes. Exactly, exactly. Thank you so much. Um, so as, uh, I was, as we were just talking about before we went live, we have had you on the radio show before, and I'm really happy that we're getting this opportunity to continue the discussion we were having. It was so good. I, I left the radio <laughs> show feeling so good and so empowered. So I thank you uh, for, for joining us again. Thank you so much. Well, I love the opportunities to share. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And so do we. So do we. Let me uh, start with um, to, to kind of bring everybody back up to speed on where we were. Uh, ba well, basically people that may not have ever heard of you or have not, didn't have the opportunity to listen to the radio show. Could you share with us uh, a little bit about your background, how you began your spiritual path and how you ended up uh, being where you are now? All right. Thank you. Well, it uh, began when I was 19, and I was married at 19, and three months later, my husband was killed. And there were a lot of unanswered questions uh, regarding his death, so I went to my first psychic reader, and uh, she became my first teacher, and uh, she basically set me on a path, or let's say that whole event set me on my path. Prior to that, I probably would have been content to be a mom and uh, be married and have a home. So uh, I look at, back at that now, and I know that it was uh, probably a whole karmic contract between myself and that gentleman to get me started very early. So um, basically, I went to this lady once a week, and she taught me all kinds of things. She, she was a wealth of knowledge and very grounded, which I was very fortunate. And then it, uh, I basically was so interested in consciousness and how the mind works and how thought creates and ever since I was small uh, the whole idea of death and illness never really made sense to me um, it just never sat well I I remembered even being very young that that wasn't natural that wasn't the way it was supposed to be so my studies took me into the tarot I taught myself the cards and uh, began doing psychic fairs and readings for people that way and then I got into rebirthing and various healing modalities but it was very divinely guided it seemed that at particular points in my life certain teachings would pop up or I'd have a dream and these beings would be telling me what my next step was and in between that you know I had marriages and I had children which fulfilled a wonderful part of my life and so it went on and on like that. I uh, got into the Course in Miracles and studied that for many years. Uh, I really was big on journaling and manifesting. And then I got into psychic laser, which is really a form of psychic surgery. And I was led to the healing modalities uh, through a dream I had where some beings came to me and took me underneath the Great Pyramid and told me that I was going to be a healer. So I did that I did that for many, many years. Psychic surgery is really what it was, clearing the etheric field. And then of course I'm a Reiki master and you know the hypnotherapy and the past life regressions were all steps along the way. But uh I would meditate quite frequently as well. Tried to do it at least an hour a day if I could. But uh when I meditated, I went in and asked to be taught. I wasn't in meditation to become still I would ask my higher self to teach me and so I was taken on 
many, many journeys and into many other dimensions and worlds. And I had a, a moment where I actually dematerialized one time and then I got frightened because uh, my children were quite small at the time. And I thought, what if I can't get back? What if <laughs> one of these days I'm, I dematerialize, I can't get my body back. Uh, so, you know, the thought brought me back. And it actually was at that point that I switched from inner meditation and went to the Course in Miracles, which uh, was an outer form of doing the same thing um, and, and dealt, dealt with the ego, as you may know. Right. And uh, our motivations. And that was a necessary part of my path, too. But when I would meditate, I'd suddenly find myself in my own library, my own Akashic Records. And those seemed to be deliberately guided by my guides. They would take me to a particular life that either needed resolving or I had achieved some sort of ability and they wanted me to know about. But I couldn't get into the Akashic field consciously. Um, it was always chosen by my higher guides. So I went and I took a course to learn how to do it consciously. And um, since then, once I started reading my own records and I started doing readings for other people, uh, I put the tarot on the back burner. It wasn't, wasn't my main form of doing readings anymore, although I, I still taught people how to read the tarot. I still do. Uh, I have written a little tiny beginner's tarot as well. Published it myself. That was my first attempt at right. being an author. <laughs> okay. But that leads me up really to the present day of course I've had divorces and some deaths in between which are all learning experiences and um, but you know today I predominantly focus on the records and writing about what happens in the groups yeah right now let me ask you um, and Gail can you explain for us we, we you just spoke a little bit uh, about uh, the Akashic field and the Akashic records could you uh, maybe define uh, for our viewers what is the Akashic Field for those that don't, may not understand the Akashic Field or the Akashic Records. Yes, okay. The Akashic Records is really the library or the records of creation. It's like a database of information where everything that's ever happened in creation is recorded in a spiritual plane. Uh, if you look up the word, it's a Sanskrit word that means... A, Akasha actually means ether, and it does imply a spiritual plane, you know, as opposed to a, a physical plane. But my experience is that it's a vast field of information that holds uh, everything that's ever happened, it holds the all that is. And there's a way that you can access that field and bring certain questions to it and find all sorts of information, as well as each person has their own uh, their own database or their own library book, it's called, by other people, that holds the record of all of their lives in spirit, all of their past lives, all their journeys. Uh, it shows you a soul theme. And the thing I just want to say, what's different about the Akashic field, let's say as opposed to any other kind of memory, okay, mm -hmm. is that it seems to hold our relationships with all of life and our relationships with source. So when you're in that field, you know, you clearly get a, a sense of a sacredness in terms of our interconnection with all life everywhere and how what we do and what we think affects that field and how it affects us. Now, as far as, you know, we're, we're, we're discussing something that records uh, all of our experiences um, does it record future experiences, and where would free will play into all of this? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I have come to understand is that anything that ever could happen has happened somewhere or mm -hmm. is happening now. So I would say that the future really is filled with potential possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, let's say different timelines that we could go down, we could make, this is where free will comes in, because what you choose determines what timeline or what future track you end up putting yourself on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, 
it's kind of like which which timeline do you focus your attention on or as you grow and change in your consciousness more timelines become available to you because they're functioning at different frequency levels so your ability to access higher and higher frequency dimensions or realities has everything to do with your own state of consciousness at the time does that explain it yeah absolutely so it's almost like yeah it's almost like saying we we are living every aspect of creation right now each one of us uh, but what actually you experience in your 3D life has everything to do with what your focus of attention is and where, yeah, where you're focusing your thoughts and emotions and beliefs. Right, know? right. It's almost yeah. as if, um, oh, for lack of a better term, I remember during my um, shamanic journeys, I used to always say it was like catching a wave and riding that consciousness wave or that wave of consciousness. So. Yes. I guess what mm-hmm. you're saying is what you're aligning with, what you're focusing on, that's what's going to take you to that, where that wave is going to take you, wherever it's been, uh, 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 where it's destined to go. Right, and you can, you know, also call it an open door. You know, there's so many different realities out there, and, you know, if we stay single-focused for a very long time on a particular perceptual path, we're only going to be able to experience uh, limited possibilities within our own frame of reference, which sure, which sure. makes me uh, want to comment that when I learned to read the records and I'd get into my own, uh, for the, probably the first month, uh, my guides would take me to what they called erasing my records, and it wasn't really that I was erasing them out of creation, but what it really was, was a recon- reconciliation process where I'd be taken to lifetimes where... I had unhealed issues with people that needed forgiveness. Uh, Maybe I was ill in a certain way and I needed to see the correlation to that appearing in my life now and do something about it. Um, They even took me to a girl in high school this lifetime who wanted to be my friend and I didn't want to be her friend. And they had me feel what she felt. And, you know, I had to ask for forgiveness in my heart. So it was like nothing was missed. And they, it was like a videotape they showed me for a month straight on all these different things. And some people would say that that happens when a person dies and they have their, their, uh, you know, their life review when they cross over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I feel like I was going through it this life, at least for past lives. I, I was shown certain things in this life now, but, you know, it, it was all a purification process in order to, you know, get you to a place of compassion and non-judgment and you know what that opens me up to a, another question about akashic healing and uh-huh. is it fair to say uh, I, I might be getting this completely wrong but from what i'm understanding that you're talking about uh being uh awakened or or being shown uh past life um illnesses or 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 um relationships that need to be healed can we heal past lives can we heal our acoustic records can we can we change mm-hmm. our acoustic records well okay there's a couple questions in there yes i <laughs> okay. know i'm sorry <laughs> okay that's okay okay yes you can heal past lifetimes you know by looking at your i call it your time stream and i'll use that phrase just for convenience but when you look at your time stream which is the history of your soul and what it's done and you see how you were in certain lives and what you experienced Um, You know, 99% of the people you meet this life, you were connected to in the past. Because it just keeps recycling around until ultimately it's all, it all either progresses, your relationships with these people progress forward. Sometimes they don't. Uh, Sometimes people end up enemies, you know, they, they don't understand what's being asked. But ultimately it's all an opportunity for healing, forgiveness, for... Um, you know, growth, really. And depending on how you do that depends what happens, you know, with those past life records in terms of your, you know, what is your soul going to do next? What's it going to experience next? Okay, so I'll answer part two of your question. When people want to know if they can change their records and what sources said is that you can't change an event once it has happened It's happened and it's in the field. But what you can do 
is you can go back to a certain time period in your mind and you can recreate the scenario of an event in your mind back in the same time period. So what you do at that point is you create a new event. You create a new timeline. So now they both exist. You know, the old one uh, that might not have been so great, but also the new one exists as well. Right. So you're not taking away the old one, but you're remapping. You know, you're remapping, you're going to a different timeline where a different outcome occurred. And that will be powerful, and that will affect your 3D life now. Wonderful. I like that a lot. It's good to hear that. I like to hear that. And speaking of the past and changing our our, our personal records and whatnot, uh, you know, there's a practice that I find very offensive that the Mormons do where they baptize people after they've died. And it brings me to my question, can other people uh, access your personal records without your permission? Well, they can, but I really do believe they have to be at a particular frequency to access the Akashic field. You know, in let me let me say let me let me do this in two ways cuz mm -hmm. let me bring up remote viewing for example, okay? In a way you could say remote viewing is, you know, fast forwarding into the future or into right now, but my understanding of it is that there's no sacredness about that. It's just trying to tune in and check on on a particular reality. Mm -hmm. the, the Akashic field is something very different because, because it is so sacred. So if your motives are not really pure, I just don't think you're going to tap into somebody's soul record. You'll see a blank wall. They won't let you in. Okay? Oh. And, yeah, because I've had that happen um, in readings. I mean, when somebody, a client, let's say, is asking about another person, if it's not kosher, you know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't, it doesn't relate to their soul progress in any way and they're just being nosy, um, I'll just see a blank wall of energy. I won't be able to get in. But, you know, in, in fact, the Akashic records are available to everybody, but in frequency, it's like they have their own safeguard where, you know, if your frequency isn't high enough or you're not in the right frame of consciousness... Uh, you won't get into the holiness of a person. So, it's almost, does that answer your question? Yeah, it's, I guess uh, what I'm getting is that it's kind of like you must be vibrating at your highest light in order to, to be able to access. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, and it does affect your ability to downstep inf information. Right. You know, how how clear can you get an answer for somebody or how clear does it come through and how accurate does it come through? Uh, has a lot to do with who you are in your consciousness as well, because there's, you know, there's there's that communication that's heading back and forth, and the records are they're they're pretty sacred. They're held in high esteem. Good. You know, in in source. You know, it's not something to casually go into or fool around with. Uh, you know, there's there's rules about alcohol, for example. You know that you can't really have any alcohol. 24 hours before mm -hmm. you do a reading or neither can your client, you know? Right, right. So, and well, I, and it's because it's a lower vibration. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I can, I can relate to that. If, if, uh, if I can share an anecdote uh, in reference yeah. to high vibration work, um, <laughs> I used to, when I was training uh, to become a Reiki master, and this was even before I got my Reiki one, I remember going to, I think it was like my second or third class, and uh, we had gone out and I literally had one beer, one beer, and during the um, the class, or they were doing some kind of energy work, I remember just getting uh, violently nauseous, and I had to run outside, and I ended up, you know, vomiting. And uh, I, when I came back in, the teacher was like, were you partying before you came here? <laughs> I, was like, I swear I only had one beer. And she's like, your body needed to detox so you can receive the information. So I can, yes. I can relate to what you're saying completely. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and you're talking about, like... Um, we're, well, we're, we're discussing the sacredness of the Akashic Records, and uh, you talk about the Lord of the Records. Who are, who are the Lords of the Records? Yeah, thank you for that question, because my answer may disagree with other people's opinion. <laughs> but my experience of the Lords is that they're, they're overseers or guardians of the records, and they're, 
they're basically beings who are in charge of keeping people's records intact and um you know they're not they're not a hierarchy and they're not who you would go to for permission a lot of people think you need to go to the lords of the record for permission and that they may say yes they may say no that's not my experience at all mm. of them they're they're appointed they're on appointment basically to keep your book safe, to keep it from being infiltrated in any way. Okay, so that's who they are. You really get permission from the person themselves. You know, when you go to do a reading, it's not the Lord you're asking. It's it's the person right. who's sitting who's sitting with you in agreement, you know? Yeah. I understand. That, Very good. It, and... Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, what we can get from accessing the records. So uh, what is what's beneficial about accessing your records, whether it be through a reading or, or some type of spiritual experience? Well, I, I just found them to be immensely, uh, you know, filled with helping me understand who I am and what I'm doing here. I think that's the biggest thing is that if you can see your soul stream you can see who you've been in other lives you can see who's been your friends who's been your enemies uh, you can see what you haven't completed you can look at challenges that you didn't overcome uh, you can understand what your soul contract is this lifetime you know what are you here to do what does your soul want to get accomplished before you leave this planet mm -hmm. all of those things and and I think even more than that understanding who the people are to you in your life today because you know like I say somebody can think they have an enemy or an adversary at their job let's say and you go into their records and you see that these people are connected in another life and that that adversary is actually providing a really special opportunity for you to grow in a particular way which couldn't have happened through a different means and that you know and I you also get to see once people cross over and they go back home and they see who these people are, they actually all giggle and chuckle and say, wow, didn't we do a good job? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like it when I did that to you? How was that? Was that good or what? Right, right. <laughs> okay. So, it, you know, to me, <clears throat> it's, you know, there are beliefs that say that we, that our memory is taken from us deliberately. There are schools of thought that say, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't move through this life and have your tests and your challenges if you knew everything. And I disagree because those tests and challenges are still as hard. Oh, absolutely. Even, <laughs> even though you understand, you know, but you can understand what your choices are a whole lot better, but you may not always be ready to, t to make those choices. So it really shows you the truth about yourself and where you are at any given moment. So I, you know, like I say, I used to be a tarot reader for 35 years and I still do teach tarot. I've learned how to heal with tarot and take it to a real spiritual level. But in terms of personal readings, uh, you know, I will always do an Akashic reading right. over a tarot reading any day. It sounds like it would be a little bit more, I guess, more extensive. I, I like that. Well, the other thing, too, is oftentimes when I open the records and I see, uh, them oftentimes will show me certain colors and colors are interesting because you know they're information they're living vibrations of information and if they show me certain colors they will always give me the information about those colors for the person in terms of a spirit identity or a soul identity in terms of their progress or what they've uh, accumulated in terms of gifts and abilities so I, I just love it I think it's fantastic I, it sounds great, and uh, you know it's funny. Um, it's not funny, but I, I'm enjoying how you brought up um, <clears throat> the fact that uh, even though you know sometimes it's still very difficult, and uh, I, I personally have been in that situation where I've had either a reading done or some kind of you know message download, quote unquote, that is very true, and I know it's true, but it's just it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow. And I think a lot of us have that, you know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. let me be honest. You know, I got to really be honest with myself. And I think what yeah. you're saying gives us that, you know, hopefully we get the courage to swallow that hard pill sometimes. Um, 
and speak, I was going to say, and speaking of, and, and, and to ch not really change things a little bit, but you were talking about, uh, I guess, the challenge that we have and, and everything that we just went through. You talk about the fall from grace, and I, I was wondering if you go a little bit more into what is your concept of it and, and why did it happen? Why is this, um, why are we separated from source? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, I hope I can do the answer justice in, in a short period. It actually came about by us having a group one night, which we had a topic called, Who Are We and Why Are We Here? And, of course, everybody who came thought they were going to get an answer personally, you know? Right, right. <laughs> okay, but Source basically went way back to when Earth was a, a sphere of swirling white light. And it actually called it the first swirling. And it showed us, many of us who are here today and who have been incarnating for eons, particularly in very potent cycles, were one of the first beings, group of beings that were on that, that swirling mass of light. We were light beings ourselves. But then when I saw, I saw this huge cosmic wave come through the universe and hit the sphere. It just hit it and it split it into two pieces. Now, it, they weren't equal pieces. There was one large mass that fell to, um, and kind of knocked it out of its orbit, sent it to a much denser uh, frequency or vibration, so much so that it began to, over time, now we're talking billions of years, like coalesce slowly and become really the earth that we're on. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is fallen earth. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate to say that, but it is, okay? And, um, but what it's shown was that some of the beings that were on that original sphere fell too. Some remained on the, uh, the piece that was intact. Some fell. And as they fell, their frequency also began to densify and coalesce. All right. So we've been trying to come back through every cycle, through lots of incarnations, to raise this piece. I call it back up to its paradise self. Mm -hmm. Because... Originally, that's what Source wants, wants paradises everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what's happened, though, is that resulted in us having what a lot of people would term a split mind or light and dark in our consciousness or good and evil and awareness of good and evil and awareness of uh, duality. Um, if you go back into a lot of the old religions in the world and you read about them, they all have a history of a memory of a paradise. Yes. Yeah. So we, we have that too. We have that in our consciousness that the people who are here that say, I, you know, this isn't my home. I don't belong here. This isn't what I remember. <laughs> you know, that's the memory that they have of being, you know, in a place that was not so filled with suffering and negativity and, and death, yeah. actually. Okay. But we have, because the event happened, we have the memory of both, I say, actually in our spirits. Our, our spirits you know, part of it were fragmented at that time. And that's really the level where things have to heal in our spirit bodies. Because it's the spirit that remembers, you know, that it was once eternal, had eternal life, uh, could move interdimensionally, uh, you know, and, and have all these abilities. And now we have this self that's physical that seems to not be able to, um, you know, overcome any of those things. Okay? Yeah. So I, I get into the... The point in the book about, you know, you mentioned free will earlier. This is where free will is so important because in terms of our dualistic mind, you know, in a given day, if we were honestly watching our thoughts, you know, we'd be flipping back and forth between positive and negative all day long, you know. And um, it really is a discipline to stop what you're thinking and make a choice only for, you know, the reintegration of your paradise self. And it sounds simple, but it isn't simple in terms of its effects. So that's the best expl explanation I can give you of the thought. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm aligning with it. I truly am. I, when I had my own, um, my own awakening, quote unquote, and I had my vision quest, that was very similar to what the beings that uh, were showing me uh, we're basically a very similar timeline story, I, I guess, or concept, for lack of a better term. Uh, and it seems that ever since then, 
uh, that's where I began striving to to be a, a, of a to bring myself into a higher consciousness and also right. the planet. And it just right. feels like that has been. So, I feel it's very. Um, I don't want to say urgent, but I can't. Yes. I can't turn away from it. It's like I feel I need to help this planet raise its vibration mm -hmm. and, and raise us to where we're supposed to be. And um, you know, I've had. Um, I've had uh, several instances where uh, I, I have felt that, you know, that whole feeling of this is this is a strange, you know, stranger in a strange land. This is not where I belong. I'm not meant to yes. be here. And right. uh, yes, I am meant to be here, I guess, you know. Yes. <laughs> but uh, a lot of us are, you know, the light workers, mm -hmm. the indigos and whatnot, as we yeah. used to call it. But, um, and, you know, it, we just had 2012, you know, the whole solstice, and uh, we, we were all talking about it and look many people got very discouraged by you know not waking up to paradise or many people got discouraged because it wasn't the end of the world you know and i'm seeing a lot of this where people are like mm -hmm. oh you're not going to fool me again and right. you know i can't help but um say to those people and and, and i'm going to ask you your take on this in a moment <coughs> excuse me that it was just a calendar day uh the process has been going on for a while and it, it needs to yes. continue so mm -hmm. now that we are going through and we have passed the date, uh, what is your take on this shift and, you know, uh, what's happening? Uh, well, okay. what's happening with the Earth and the planet right now? Okay, great. Well, I think I can give everybody uh, some good news in the sense that something actually did happen in December. Okay, so people who, you know, you are right in the sense that this process of awakening has been going on, you know, ever since the indigos have been coming in, which is at least the last hundred years. So this has been a preparation that's been coming that will continue. It is, it is an ascension process in the sense of it is a change for everything on the planet. It isn't only our consciousness. Uh, the species are changing. Our own biologies are changing. And that doesn't happen overnight. Okay, so you are right, and people need to understand that these sorts of things um, are happenings in the, in the cosmos, in the universe. But what I have always seen when I've been in those records and sources talk to us, it's always shown me this influx of light that was coming in from source. It wasn't coming from the sun or the center of our galaxy. It was way beyond that. It was coming you know, from source to all life everywhere through all galaxies and solar systems. And, you know, its purpose really was to allow for the next higher, you know, state of life, to provide for it, to catalyze it, if you will. All right, but what we noticed in December, it was very strange that there were many people who had huge feelings of grief, and sadness, and depression, and anxiety. And uh, we'd go to different groups, and the people would say, yeah, you know, what's going on? I just feel this horrible sadness. And a lot of people thought that it was because it, it was uh, coming up into the day of the shooting of those children. And uh, they thought that that's what they were feeling. But, you know, I, I said, yeah, but things like that are happening all over the world all the time. And we're not in that sort of a grief. Yeah. But I went in and I asked Source about it, and Source had, uh, gave me an image of going through a birth canal and said, you know, the closer you get to the opening, you know, the fetus gets squeezed down, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the more light that comes in, you know, we're getting squeezed, you know, consider it like pressure on your cells and pressure on your nervous system, and any of our own unhealed sorrow and grief is popping up and going out into the environment, Okay, so what we were really feeling was our own unhealed grief and sadness that we've been carrying for years. The thing about that, and I'll mention this briefly, is that once, if you could imagine that all of a sudden we have all this grief out into the, the, the atmosphere, really, mm -hmm. um, this is when people can't handle, some people can't handle the pressure of that. And they personalize it, and that's when you'll see people take their own lives because they can't handle the sorrow. Mm -hmm. Or you'll see someone like that young man who, you know, lost it, mm -hmm. okay? But also, because that frequency is, is a low vibration, it also attracts entities. So you had that 
second piece happening too. Okay. Ah, yeah. All right, but then, then all of a sudden, um, when it got to be close to the twenty-first, source showed me a doorway opening, and I literally saw Christ come in, stand stand at that doorway in space, if you will. I have a hard time putting that into a language. It wasn't a physical appearance on earth. It was Christ's spirit blessing everything, Uh just sending these incredible rays of blessing everywhere. And a lot of people did report that all of a sudden the energy shifted. And my husband and I, on certain days too, we'd stop and say, God, it feels really sacred today. Or you just felt like you were, you're in this, uh, these days of holiness. So something definitely has changed for us. You know, that light that Source has been given us, you know, peaked, you know, around the 21st or in December. Yeah. And it is a blessing that everybody has privy to now, which means this is the time to manifest those long-desired dreams. I mean, you're, we're supported now in more of a way than we ever have been. Excellent. Excellent. And um, if, if I may add to that, I... I <clears throat> that, that feeling of sorrow that we're that you're that you're discussing uh it brings me back to um again brings me back to my awakening in my early 20s um and now i know this was actually that was during the uh the cosmic alignment i guess the, the initial one in the 80s mm-hmm. and i remember remember feeling very depressed because i wasn't ready to give up that life and and i feel maybe that's what we're going through as a planet you know, yes. giving up that 3D mentality, giving up the materialism. You know, people right. know we have to do that. We have to let go of materialism. We have we to move into a consciousness and, and a higher vibration of love and light and compassion. But mm-hmm. a lot of people's, I guess, our egos maybe are are, are still struggling with that. They don't want to let go mm-hmm. of, you know, Maseratis and, you know, porn or whatever i don't know but i I see that's kind of what what might be happening also yeah well also it's it's a huge codependency yeah (laughs) that that we've had on systems that you know help us out and take care of things for us and all of that is as we see is just breaking down and it's breaking down because you are correct it is demanding that we grow up yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and a great example of that is, uh, God, just a, a few days ago, I forgot what exactly I posted on our GIC Facebook page, but it was something to the effect of a company being exposed to using nothing but genetically modified organisms and horrible poisons. And they're like, oh, no, you mean I got to give that up now, too? You know, and they're like, yeah. I'm getting depressed. You know, I can't eat Cheerios anymore. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. And it, it, but that's a part of the process, you know. That is yes. a part of the. And yes, it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Um, well, yeah. If I could just interject yeah, there on. for a minute, Bernard. You yeah. know, people would realize that you know we're made of color and sound, and you know you really can be nourished by colors and by sunlight and things that you don't really pay attention to. You know, not that it's the whole thing to eat, but it really can nourish you a lot, a lot more than you think. Oh, absolutely. And I've been, I've been reading up on a lot of that, actually. Um, uh, the sun gazing and the, and the, what, what do they call them? Um, Breatharians. Breatharians. Yes. I find that very, yes. very interesting. And, and I've got to tell you, um, and I don't want to get too personal, but I will say since, um, well, since the solstice, I have, I've had a lack of appetite and yeah, I did get a little sick, but I'm over the, the so-called cold that I had or whatever, but I still, I'm eating less and just feeling more energized. So it's a very, right. very interesting process. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. Yep. Now we're looking at, we're talking about change. We're talking about things and the shift that is now, I mean, we're in full blown shift mode as far as from what I'm hearing and from what I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. what kind of financial shifts, what other global shifts are you anticipating and, and why is that? Is, is it a part of the process? Well, yes, I, I think that all of those artificial systems have to collapse. Mm-hmm. I just think that's part of the process. They're just not compatible anymore with with where we're potentially heading which where i hope we're heading which where we feel i feel like we're heading yeah 
But I, I think, you know, what I sources shown me is that there will be a new money system created eventually. Yeah. But it will be based more on um, a true method of exchange and not on greed and hoarding. Okay? So, like, Source didn't have any problem with money, for example. In fact, it preferred money over credit, interestingly. Mm. <laughs> okay? Uh, because it said that, it, you know, initially it wasn't a bad mode of exchange. It just got distorted and people got greedy and the distribution got all messed up. Oh, and, absolutely. And, yeah, and that's really the problem with it, okay? But I, I do see that eventually happening. It looks like it's going to still take some years for that to actually come into place because the old order, you know, isn't going to give up its ghost very easily. Mm-hmm. You know, the corporations aren't going, to, aren't going to suddenly shift from what they're doing to something healthy. You know, that's not who we can rely on. And what I am seeing is more little communities being established by people themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there have been some communities, you may have heard of them already, where people are making their own money. Yep. Uh, they're doing their own gardening within their community. They're taking control, you know, of the food that they eat and the way that they live. And that I think we need more of that. I think we need less dependence, you know, on our government for finances and for goods and we we need to start coming together, you know, in, in developing things ourselves. But but I do th- see that it is eventually going to all fall down. And uh, but it looks like still some years yeah, ahead. Yeah. Unfo- yeah. Unfortunately for me, I believe that I, I agree with you completely, and I've gotten the same uh, message or vision. Actually, I saw. In my visions, what I've seen is uh, tribal style communities yep. um, where, you know, there's one or two or even councils of leaders and then the communities are going to be trading with each other. So it's not right. like you can't have, you know, honey or you can't have cotton from Egypt. Yes. I mean, everyone's still going to yes. trade with each other, but it will not yes. be done through uh, governmental or corporate uh, methods. It'll be more personalized yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just posted something like that this morning that um, it was uh, my source told me to post this. And it was like, we need to turn our back. We need to turn our back and allow the system to collapse and create our own new system on mm-hmm. a more personal level. So I, I re- yes. align with that. And I feel exactly what yeah. you mean by that. Um, yeah. Now, you know, we're going through earth changes, whether they be ma- mm-hmm. man-made whether they be mm-hmm. universal, uh, whether it be solar flares, whether it be the environment, whether it be harp or chemtrails, we're going through through stuff, and there's no denying that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people talk about safe places, and a lot of people talk about. I, actually, I have a friend of mine who said I'd rather live on the coast and uh, you know get swallowed by the tsunami. But <laughs> and I felt that way a couple of times. But I'm in the mountains myself. Are there um, safe places during these changes? Well, no. (laughs) (laughs) Good answer. (laughs) Very realistic. Uh, Okay, and and I think the reason is, is because if you were to look at the Earth's grids, you know, they're a fluctuating field. They're they're in a topsy-turvy state right now. Yeah. And I think until all of that settles down, you know, lots of places have... Let's say fault lines. Lots of places have fault lines where the earth is going to be relieving pressure through there. And, you know, I think you're going to be seeing a lot more small quakes and maybe a few big ones. And uh, a lot of it, a lot of stuff's happening underwater as well. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of things heating up under the oceans. So, you know, obviously the earth's got to release that in some way. So we're, we're going to be seeing uh, continual earth changes. And... Um, you know, of course, as our if as we balance out as a species, and and this is the thing, we have to balance out. A lot of the reason we see such extremes in our climate is because we're so unbalanced, and you know, and our own male and female energy isn't online internally, and really, we can't expect those forces to calm down and be in balance externally. You know, if we're not inside ourselves. So how all of this plays out, you know, a few years ago, people have always asked me earth change questions and I can always see 
the future, how it looks like it's going to pan out. And a lot of things have happened. But then we, you know, we came to a place where every three months you'd look in and it would look a little bit different. You know, places yeah. that look like they were in danger uh, at one period, six months later, the pressure was relieved because there were smaller quakes around the earth. But ultimately, what sources said to us is you are your own safe place. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, your consciousness is your own safety. Now, there are some of us who are meant to be right in the thick of things. You know, we're not all meant to find a nice, quiet uh, piece of land and live there and not be in in the mess. Right, you know, right. s- some of us are meant to go off and do that and start our own gardens and things, but others of us are... You know, our mission is to be warriors. We're meant to be, you know, in the tragedy zones where we can help. Yeah. So I I think what I'm trying to say is we all really have to trust where we are. You have to know that if you're guided to go to a place, uh, you know, I'm guided to be in San Diego. And, of course, you know, you're in Earthquake Central in California. But I I never see California dropping off into the ocean. I never see it. Mm-hmm. You know, I see places like Washington State and Oregon uh, having quakes that take take the pressure off some of the fault lines in California. So, you know, I just trust that I'm meant to be here now and this is where I am. And if I'm guided to not be here, I'll be told. Um, so that's my answer to that, really. Absolutely. And it's funny, we, um, we had just spoken uh, prior to the show. I was saying how... I find a lot of our, uh, I, I guess, I don't want to say leaders, but, you know, public people in the consciousness movement, there's a lot of us in, in the San Diego, California area, and there's got to be a reason for that. Um, so, I, again, you know, following your heart and knowing knowing where you need to be at the right time in the right place. You know, I remember a time where I just wanted to move into a cave and become an ascetic, you know, and just meditate <laughs> all day, you know, and... Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a time when I was very, very introverted and I didn't want to be a part of society. I wanted to really right. just, you know, teach or be a part of the background. And of course, here I am thrust into the public eye and living in a small city again. And, and, and I love it. I think it's exactly where I need to be. The same thing uh, could go with somebody who's living in New York City. I mean, God knows uh, after Sandy, Occupy Sandy is a great example of that. We need yeah. people like that in these zones to be able to organize and help with uh, whether it be relief or, or healing or, or whatnot. So I relate to what you're saying very, very much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now let's, yeah. um, let's move this a little bit, uh, a little bit further out into the universe. And uh, let me okay. ask you, what does source say, uh, or what do the records say about ETs, the men in black? Um, are they helping? Are they hurting? Are they there? Are they not there? What, what have you gotten from all of um, your connection? Yes. Okay. Probably not enough, but I have gotten some. Um, well, ETs have been here forever. You know, it, they're not a new thing. They, a lot of ETs have colonized this planet a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So you do have, you do have groups of ETs that are, let's say, still very primal, uh, and they're the ones that have really been in control of a lot of things that have been going on, and who really don't want us to you know, raise ourselves up into more light-based beings. Right. So they've been here, and they're still here, and they're really not interested in our freedom, okay? Now, they actually, if we can go back to the fall for a minute, a lot of those particular races came in during that fall. You see, once this planet started getting denser, um, they looked at it as an opportunity for a new home, Right. okay? It was vibrationally compatible with them at that time, and they they have a real resistance to letting go of that. Okay, so but you also have uh, wonderful light beings. I mean, certainly many of us are ETs, mm-hmm. and we know it. You know, we know we've not come from here, so we've been coming and going as well to try to uh, raise the consciousness. This isn't the first time; it's been many times. Uh, but I have seen, I'm going to call it a particular dispensation that's occurred last year where Source showed me that it gave permission for many ben- beneficial ETs to come into here where before they didn't have permission. It was almost like uh, 
we had to be left to our own devices yeah, for yeah. a certain amount of time, you know. So so that is, we have the opportunity now. Certainly the crop circles are evidence of uh, new frequencies coming into this planet. Um, they they come from a variety of races, actually. Okay, so yes, we've been involved with them all along. Some of us are them. Uh, yes, there's negative ones that are having a real hard time letting go. But I see that they're not going to succeed. Yeah. Yeah, sources told me that the time of evil is done. Yeah, that's, okay. that's my intuition as well, my gut. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's done. It's stop, stop playing. It's time to get real and, and move yeah. into our new, um, and evolve into our next state of being. Uh, I, I feel that, you know, many species go through it. And uh, this <laughs> is our time now to move uh, to the next level. And, and and unfortunately, I will say that for me, and I actually this is something we didn't have a chance to discuss. So we'll have to invite you back in a few months. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> okay. idea, because and the reason why I'm saying that is uh, is that um, for me, when when I say we're evolving to to our next level, I feel we already were there, and I don't know right. if that's really much a, a, a part of the the fall. Or the fact that we just got a little bit too greedy, kind of like uh, the um, hypothesis of Atlantis getting greedy and destroying itself and uh, being very yeah, evolved but, beings at the time. Yeah, and I do think really, though, Bernard, that that's a consequence of, of vibration itself. Okay, mm -hmm. so, for example, as soon as you put your feet on planet Earth, you're, you're in a duality system. Okay, yeah. so, you know, you're, it's going to affect this polarization that we have going on but that's why part of the job here is to consciously be choosing what you're going to entertain and what frequency you're going to manifest here because if you you can't serve two masters forever mm -hmm. you can't say that oh i'm going to be in judgment today and then at the same time why isn't there peace right. <laughs> you know they don't go together okay so like compassion and forgiveness have to be the way it is and and that that has to be a conscious choice and when that happens the whole quantum field changes right when you choose that it literally does have an effect i mean particles and electrons they all change themselves around according to your focus i, I agreed and and i can't help but um but share uh what i'm feeling right now because what i'm feeling is something that i felt uh, many years ago where we, ha we have heard in the past, and, and I, maybe because I'm not around it so much anymore, I don't hear it, but mm -hmm. in the past you always heard people talk about separating their professional life from their personal life. Uh, I remember um, you know, being with good friends, and uh, they'll say something like, uh, oh yeah, but that's just business, that's just business. No, it's still personal. You're you're turning yes. off my electric. That's that's personal. You know, you're right. you're you're evicting me from my home. That's that's personal. You know, yes. you're taking money out of my pocket. That's personal. That's not just business. Right. So I, I I can relate to what you're saying. That you know, I can't help but remember a, a, one of my first lessons uh, from my teacher back in my early twenties was uh, his definition of a shaman and the, and basically what he said was we have the physical plane we have the mental plane we have the spiritual plane the objective of a shaman is to dissolve the barriers and make it all one world that's right and i i, right. I just i that's what i'm feeling with what you're saying absolutely and it well, is, that's it, what we need to do now it is so and let me make this real quick point have you heard of a woman called penny kelly actually yes i have heard of her well, Penny Kelly is so interesting, and you know, I just, I just love her. But of course, she, she wrote a book about the elves that are on her farm, and you know, we're reading it now, and it's not the first time I've heard this, but it brought it back around to the fact that there are, you know, beings in in nature, in in our own three D world, that are part of us that we're just so unaware of and so not in communion with that have incredible advice and healing abilities and know land uh, and know how trees work together and crops work together more so than we can try to think in our own heads. And so I, I'm only bringing it up to show that the degree of lack of communication that we have with not only each other but the world around us is huge. 
Yeah. And so this this whole new time period is for more telepathy, uh, more communion with all life everywhere. And you really, you can't achieve that unless you can break down your own heart barriers. You know, yeah. unless you can be honest and take a look at yourself and, you know, tell yourself the truth about things. You know, you won't have that sensitivity to other things going on if you can't do that. Yeah. And, and one of the things uh, I've noticed that I talk about often is that sensitivity, uh, for those of us that are, might just be getting started to wake up to that, it's a very subtle thing. So you have to mm -hmm. be aware of that. You know, you, the, the yeah. energy from that leaf outside is not going to shine in your face. You have, it's a very subtle thing. And, and you, right. have to, you have to develop a sensitivity to that, like with what you're saying exactly. <laughs> Uh, we're we're yeah. running out of time. I can't believe this went by so quickly. <laughs> so I have one last question for you, and then we're going to do some announcements. Okay. But um, okay. And I know we've talked a lot already about your message. However, uh, according to all of the information that you have access to, what would you say is the main message for everyone at this time? Okay. To me, the main message is that... Um, you can't judge and there is no judgment. And it may sound like you've heard that before. But it, to have it be an actuality in your life where you really understand that everybody is you, it's not like, yeah. oh, you're related to them. Everybody is you. You're them and they're you. And everything we do and think affects everybody else and what they think affects us. So Source has taken a really long time talking about forgiveness but talking about it in a way where we understand that there is no judgment that love love allows everything to be and it doesn't mean that you know you don't take a criminal and lock him away but you can do it with with loving him and understanding that he's your brother okay so but I think it's the discipline of really examining our own motives and why I say that that practice actually is very practical is because once we can start doing that and become really harmless, harmless in our hearts towards others, it will change how we decide things, it will change what we do, and it will bring abundance to us because abundance is being able to be in communion with all life everywhere. Yeah. That's what the real meaning of abundance is. So that's my speech about that. <laughs> I mean, it's a discipline and certainly, yeah. um, you know, it's something to be watchful of. And I always tell people to journal because we really are at a place right now where the energies are so potent for healing. They're so potent for us to be manifesting all sorts of really wonderful, incredible things. I mean, the time is now. Okay, yeah. never have we been as supported as this, you know, since I'd say ancient times when you know, the atmosphere and the energies were at, at a really high frequency long, long ago, okay? But we're there again, and um, I th think the main message is this is about creating a whole new way of living. And, uh, you know, but we, we got to start from our own hearts and being willing to do it. As oftentimes, sources said, do you know who your neighbor is? Do you know what's going on in your community. You know, you live in a certain area because you're a caretaker of the area. Everybody is who's involved in a community. And, you know, step outside your box and find out who lives down the street. And, you know, little simple things that actually mean a lot, especially in times of crisis or going into the communities that you and I were speaking about earlier. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, so I just think, you know, the whole idea that there's no judgment it's huge uh, because a lot of us can't forgive ourselves for things. And um, we're our own worst enemy in that way, you know? Absolutely. And that, yeah, that's so, very much the truth. Yeah. I, 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 what I'm getting is, um, I, I, I guess it's an upsize, is uh, this is not a rehearsal. This is it. We're here. The time is now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's create that okay, new yeah. world now. This yes. is the new world. Um, for everybody, first of all, I want to thank you very much, Ann Gale. What a, what, I, always a pleasure. My goodness, I couldn't have asked for a, a better uh, first interview of the year here on GIC TV. So thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Um, for everybody, I hope you can see this. I'm going to put it up. It's a time for change. Oh, wait, let me bring it back a little bit. There we go. 
This is uh, Ann Gale's book. If you are a GIC member, a regular uh, GIC uh, fan, you're going to love her book. It's an excellent book. Uh, I haven't finished reading it. Actually, you know what? I lo you know why I love your book, Ann Gale? And I do this with most books, I have to admit. Is that I can just open it up to any page, and it's something I need to hear right then, right now. Oh, good. <laughs> and the way that you have it set up, um, it's questions and answers, kind of like what's going on here uh, today. So, you guys, uh, go ahead. It's from... Um, I just want to make sure. Oh, I can't read the uh, I can't read the publisher in the dark. I'm sorry. Wildflower Press, of course. Hello. Wildflower Press, yes. And you can but find you it. Can, you can find it on Amazon, right? You can get it on Amazon, and it's in all the electronic formats. Oh. Or you can you can just write to me at a time of change info, and you can order it from there as well. Wonderful. And is that also your main website where people can follow up with you? No, the main website is angelrose.com. And I'll spell Angale. It's A I N G E A L R O S E dot com. Wonderful. Angalerose.com. And for those of you that are here, you probably saw the event page, so you know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's spelled very angelically, as far as I'm concerned. I love it. <laughs> oh, and well. look, a quick question How did the spelling come? Angale. How did the spelling for Angale come? Is it Gaelic or? It's Irish, yeah. Irish. It's... Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's Irish. Beautiful. Yeah, my, my husband actually changed my given name around uh, to Angel Rose, and uh, I always knew that my my birth name wasn't exactly correct. Yeah, <laughs> it <laughs> so always seems to be the way. <laughs> yeah, when I met my husband, he started playing around. I was born Gail Ann. Oh, I see. Yeah, so he just was playing around one day, and he's going, Gail and Gail, and, you know, then he went uh, Angel, and then he realized it was it is the Irish word for angel. I was going to say it's angel yes. to me. Yeah, absolutely yeah. beautiful. Well, again, we I thank always you. chuckle about that, Bernard. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, and and your husband does work also with you, right? He does. Yes, he's a wonderful visionary artist in his own right. And, wonderful. Um, his name is Ahanu, and he does paintings for people on really deep soul levels. And he also paints uh, what, you know, what the Christ light looks like inside a person. Oh, nice. And he actually has a whole project. If I could just toot his horn for a second. Oh, by all uh, means. They can look at his artwork at ahonu, A-H-O-N-U dot com forward slash spirit of love. Okay. Yeah. Or forward slash gallery, he said. But I like the spirit of love project. <laughs> I, always send people, I always send people to that first because... He's got the images that he's painted for people rotating around the earth. Oh, nice. And, uh, they're beautiful. Yeah, they're really beautiful. But, yeah, we do a, a lot of work together. Um, we are twin flames, and that's something we used to lecture on quite a bit. We haven't started it here, but there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. So yeah. um, that's been a huge part of what we've done, as well as uh, we have a project called the Eight Steps to Freedom, which is a course that's ongoing. Uh, about, uh, you know, looking within and examining yourself and things like that. But, uh, yeah, he's he's been with me all along. Is there anything else you want to say, Hanna? Because he's right here. I know. <laughs> EightStepsToFreedom.com. It's the number eight, isn't it? Eight-Steps-To-Freedom. Well, Two-Freedom. Okay. okay, got it. Great. Thank you for that opportunity. No, by all means, thank you so much. I know because I, I know he's doing a lot of work also, so the, all yes, the better. I I, and again, I've missed about three questions I wanted to ask you, but we have to call it a night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, okay. but um, anyway, uh, thank you. And remember, everybody, it's angalerose.com, correct? Yes. And um, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, the GSC is very proud to present. Uh, starting January 22nd, we'll be doing live consciousness classes uh here on gic tv uh members will be able to interact live with me or the instructor of the day we're going to be covering everything from meditation consciousness the esoteric healing modalities energy work uh you name it everything that we talk about uh and 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 focus on at the gic and consciousness will be a part of that series uh it's backed by popular demand i, I stopped doing it about a year and a half ago and uh, people just keep writing me that they want it back. So we're going to bring it back starting January 22nd. And we look forward yeah. to that. 
So anybody, uh, anyway, thank you so much, Anne Gail Rose. And uh, we look forward to, to, to having you around again soon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye now. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.